I'd like to share uh, a little bit. I know this is a cooking class, but we can eat as good as we want, or should perhaps, because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but still we can get sick. And so um, I want to share a little demonstration with you of what we can do to assist the body in healing. Now this presentation I probably should have done a month or two ago because this would be good for flus and for colds. So before I begin, I want to start with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you've given these things that nature provides for us that can bring healing to our bodies. Father, as I share tonight, I pray that you would give me clarity of thought and freedom of speech, that this could be a blessing, Father, to someone. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what I'd like to share with you, it's called the Russian steam bath. Now, there are different names for it. Um, perhaps some of you have done this, tried it, maybe not. But what I would like to do first is to um, go through what you would need to perform the Russian steam bath. Now, some of the things we would do it for, I know back home in Bismarck, I was working with a cancer patient. And believe it or not, um, steam baths are very good for cancer. Because what a steam bath does, it'll, it'll give a fever to the body. Now, fever is not bad, but in our society today, people believe that a fever is a bad thing, but a fever can be a friendly thing also. And so, in today's society, we usually take medications and drugs which are harmful to the body to reduce the fever. But the fever is the body's response to bring healing to it. And so what a fever does, it activates the immune system. It raises the white blood cell count. And so these things are good for the body to fight infections from bacteria or foreign viruses. And so this also we can do for colds because many of these uh, diseases that we get don't have fevers with them such as colds, sometimes fevers can be very low grade, and so you can increase that fever to, to bring about a response. And so, um, if you were going to do a cold or a flu treatment with the steam bath, the supplies you would need is we, we want to start out, first of all, with a foot bath. And so this, um, we would keep at the foot of the chair. Now the chair you can use could be either wooden or metal, but either way, we want to keep the individual comfortable. And so you're going to need some towels, which the towels can be of um, twofold benefit because the individual is going to be sweating quite a bit because we're going to elevate his body temperature somewhere between 101 and 103. And so he's going to be sweating and he might be uncomfortable. So a towel on the back of it and a towel on the front of the chair will help him be comfortable number one, but as we move forward, it's, it serves another purpose. Um, in order to have steam, what we, what we, or what I use, um, is VIX. It's a steam vaporizer. You can pick these up. I picked mine up at Walmart. I think it's something like $13. Very cheap. Um, you can use a hot plate, which is electrical uh, device, appliance, where you can put a kettle on there to steam the water. Um, I really don't care for that because you're dealing with um, something that could ignite a fire. Um, but some people do use that. You can, you can, but you need to be safe. But this, I prefer the Vicks Vapor. Now this, it takes a while for it to create steam, so you want to start a few minutes before your treatment. You plug it in, and always, when the steam comes out, always have it pointing away from the chair because steam can burn. You don't want to burn. So that's the second purpose for the towel that you can keep the steam from getting too in close contact with the skin and causing burns. So I like to put this on the back of the chair. And so I'll start that running and I'll begin with my foot bath. Now the foot bath, the water temperature, I like to start out at about 103 degrees. And what you can do is you can have a pitcher of water that's warmer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Stanley, he's going to be my uh, Patient. Patient, thank you. I'll have you sit down, Stanley. Now what we would first start out with is putting water into the foot bath. And you always, especially if somebody's diabetic, 
you want to be careful that the water's not too warm to start out with. So raise their feet, help them, because they may not feel good in the first place, but also you can hold their feet with your hand and so you can set it in. And so you can feel the temperature with your hand also. If you recognize that it's too warm, you can pull it out, you know. And so you always want to make sure that as you start it in, go slow. Ask the patient, is this, is this okay? Is this temperature too warm or is this okay? And they can respond. They'll let you know. Um, and you take the shoes off. It's very right? Yes. Yes. Please. Um, let me back up just a bit. What we can do is we'll have the individual, who I work with men, males, um, whatever they're comfortable with. If they're comfortable with in their underwear or swimming trunks or something light, but the rest of the body should be exposed so that you know the steam can interact with the body and you want the toxins because this will also release toxins as the body heats up. The skin will release toxins. It will try to get rid of the bacteria, the virus that has invaded the body. And the toxins means poisons. Poisons, you know, um, bacteria, viruses, whatever okay. the body, and that's really toxins to me. I use the term because that's how I see disease as. Disease is the body trying to rid itself of toxins. Dis-ease, the body's not at ease. There's something going on and it wants to get rid of it. And so we do steam treatments to allow the body to help eliminate these toxins through the skin pores, um, the sweat, um, is, is the key element with the steam bath. And so once we get the feet going, we get them warm. I'll put on a towel around the skin again for comfort because we're going to encircle the patient with... Now, I brought a regular shower curtain. Now, I've tried shower curtains, but they've melted with these vapor, so I don't recommend it, but I'm using it tonight. But I went online, I don't remember the website, but they make Russian steam bath, um, I don't know if they call them aprons, I'm not sure what the word is, but they have an opening at the top, it slips over the head of the patient, and they have a drawstring that you can pull it up to keep the steam from um, leaving the body. They're made what? They're plastic like a shower? We have one, but we just moved, so I, we couldn't find it. But I'll put a link on the video Sounds for her like website. Sounds like something like a beautician uses that she can Very similar, yes. Yeah. You can use a sheet and a blanket, but the plastic does keep the skin yeah. in better. Sure. So you want to make sure to keep this tight enough that the steam doesn't ex escape real readily, but you don't want the the patient to be uncomfortable. Now, this shower curtain isn't big enough, but you want to make sure that it, it covered up the steam and the feet, so all the steam would stay inside. And so, as the steamer is, is working, the temperature of the individual is going to rise, and they're going to get very uncomfortable. And so what we would like to do is attempt, now some people's body temperature, their normal body temperature might be 96, some 97, some 98. We would like to elevate it about 5 degrees. So if Stanley's was 96, we would try to achieve 101. But never go over 103. You don't want to do that because that gets very uncomfortable and it can cause problems too. But the goal of it is, is to maintain 5 degrees above your body temperature, somewhere between 101 and 103, for about 10 to 20 minutes, as long as they can bear. But during this time, you want to be talking to them somewhat to make sure that they're comfortable, but you don't want to talk too much because you want them to be relaxed. Okay? Um, now, this treatment also um, is good for rheumatoid arthritis because it heats up the joints um, and it relax them. But one thing I want to suggest to you too, which is probably most essential, that you always pray before you begin a procedure and ask God for His blessing upon it because it is God who does the healing. Amen. We're just cooperating with the things that He has shown us that will assist in healing the body. And so I would typically have prayer with the individual and always make sure that you have extra warm water because we'll check that. I keep a thermometer to check the water, you know, at what temperature we're at. I also have a thermometer for the individual. 
And we'll check that too until we can achieve the desired temperature. And so also make sure that the individual you're going to be helping. Oh, forgive me, yes. Uh, what about the head? And uh, what about if the person has a problem with guilt? With what? With the prayer be effective if the person has a problem with guilt? If a person has a problem with guilt, I think they are hindering the process of healing. Um, the individual should go to the Lord too. I mean, it's not just me that I can pray for healing for him. That is important. I mean, God can bring about healing. It's his purposes. I don't understand all his purposes. I know that I'm just to obey what he has shown me to be true. But yes, the individual should pray also for himself. Yes. But always make sure that before you do this treatment that you drink plenty of water, not cold water because that's going to keep the temperature down, but tepid water before, during, and after this procedure, okay? Now, of course, his arms are under there, so we would need a straw in the cup, and then we would allow him to drink during this procedure. Now, you're also going to want a basin. Fill the basin with water and ice because he's going to get very hot. And one thing I recommend in doing medical missionary work is always, if you can, go through the procedure yourself before you work, before you demonstrate that someone else. Because then you can understand really what's going on. You can understand the uncomfortableness. Um, it helps you to relate to what they're going through. So you're more, uh, I suppose, tender towards what's going on. You know that this gets very uncomfortable. So you want to keep them comfortable because the elevated temperature needs to stay for 10 to 20 minutes, and it can be difficult. Now, there are times where you probably wouldn't do this. Um, if somebody had serious heart issues, you wouldn't do that, because this is going to elevate the blood pressure, it's going to elevate your pulse rate, and if the pulse rate gets over 120 and stays 120, sustained for a while, you can get the ice, get it very wet, and hold it on his chest and rub it on his chest, but it's, it stays at 120 or goes higher, then cease the uh, procedure. Um, you don't want the pulse rate to be too high. So you're going to need to monitor the pulse rate and its temperature. But you have the basin of ice water, and you'll just damp this down, and you'll keep it on his head. And you'll keep him as cool as you can. It's good to have two of these. I like to do two. Get him as cold as you can and wrap one around the carotid of the neck, because the blood is going to be flowing through there. It's going to help keep the head cold. Um, and also keep the forehead to make sure it damp in the face to keep them cool. Um, and so this, it, it, it varies. Um, the gentleman I work with in Bismarck, it would take up to 45 minutes. He was at three or five different types of cancers, I can't remember. But he was a very sick individual. Um, and so his body temperature was very low. I think it was around 95. And so it's very hard to elevate a temperature on him to get a fever, to induce the fever in him. But it would take 45 minutes. Um, and this can be very draining. I've had these done. So you need to make sure that they get water in their body because it will be very hard in the body when you're done with this. But as we do this, we check the temperature, the pulse, we keep the forehead cold. We always add a little warm water as they're able to tolerate it to make sure that we get the temperature ris risen and to induce that fever. And when we're done with this, what we would have the individual do is we'll take this off, we'll have them get in the shower and take a cold shower. Why would we do that? You want to wash the toxins off, number one, and there's another two. Close the pores because you want it to get on them something cotton, preferably that's absorbable, sweatpants or pajamas. After he's done showering, put them on, go into bed, wrap them in a sheet, wrap them in a blanket because you want to keep that temperature, then his pores are going to open back up in time, then, and that temperature is going to come back up. So you want to stay with them with water again, monitoring um, his temperature. It shouldn't rise anymore, but it will go down after time, and typically. Um, it's best, if you can, to do this towards the evening. So if they do happen to fall asleep and they want to stay in bed, you can do it. But you can do it any time of the day. So if they do wake up, you can have them go in and you can have them take a warm shower to finish scrubbing off the toxins. But if you have something like cotton that's very absorbent, it should absorb and, and take a lot of that away while they're resting. Um, I think that should be everything. Any questions? So how long does the whole procedure take? 
Well, and that's why I said it varies. Some people you can induce a fever a lot quicker. It depends on their illness. Um, but the ones I've done, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Okay, are there any contraindications to doing it to someone, say, uh, heart, yes. blood pressure? What's the contraindications to do? Artery sclerosis, that's a hard word to say, What'd but say? after. Oh, okay. Atherosclerosis. Yeah. Okay. If they have that, I would not recommend it. Uh -huh. um, if it's a pregnant woman, I would not recommend it. If they have uh, some diabetics, it's maybe, maybe not. Okay. Anything with vascular problems. So it's a vascular. Yes. How about age-wise? Um, if you're very weak, yes, this probably should not be done. Um, because it's it's very taxing on the body. Right. Youth. Yes, you can do it on children. Their their temperature is going to raise much quicker, and I wouldn't do the procedure as long because it doesn't take them as long to because of their metabolism. It doesn't take as long for them to raise that temperature. But like with all of them, monitor their temperature and the pulse rate closely. Keep them cool. Um, Sometimes if if somebody if your heart rate's going to go up whenever you have fever therapy. If the heart rate goes over about 120, you can put a bag of ice over the chest and that will settle it right down. Yes, sir. Okay, well, again, um, did you mention about, uh, about keeping the, the, the head of the individual pulse? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yes. Yeah, you want to wrap, it's good to do two cloths, one around the carotids, I, I like that, that really helps, and then one in the head. And make sure and change it every 30 seconds or so, because it's going to warm up fast, because this temperature is rising, and so you're going to want to keep that rag cool. So you, both, you want to cover both cloths? Yes, I'll just wrap it around, I usually wrap it backwards. Okay. Great. Thank you, Sienna.